Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to have some fun with particles and morphing and all that good stuff, but we're not going to be using X particles or thinking particles. We are going to be using all MoGraph all the time and this is what I'm going to be demonstrating how I did. Uh, so I have this scene set up where I have all these particles for uh, shooting out all these particles and forming an arm. Uh, and but how we're going to build it is actually the opposite. We're going to have the arm being uh, all these particles from the arm getting sucked into the iPad, and then in After Effects, we're just going to like reverse it, reverse the little particle simulation thing. So I'm going to show you how to get this particle movement, and we're just going to be using MoGraph and one of my favorite effectors, the Inherence Effector. So let's let me show you how I set that all up. So I have in my scene, I have the, the arm model and the iPad that all these particles are going to zip into. And the first thing I like to do when doing a particle morph or anything like that is by not just jumping in and uh, you'll see I have all these numbers as the particles and that's a lot of geometry there. So I like to get my particle morph set up without having geometry used at all. And how I do this and how I set up all of these, you know, I really like doing these particle morphs and using the inherence effector and all that stuff. And this is just my workflow of how I found is really easy and simple to set everything up initially. So uh, what I like to do is use uh, matrix objects and use these matrices as my particle placeholders basically. So it's kind of like when you generate thinking particles where there's actually no geometry there. So you can see that those matrices actually don't show up in a render. So it's actually really light on your viewport. So you can make a crazy amount of particles or matrices and it's not going to slow down your scene. So what I'm going to do is have this set up where I'm going to have a matrix object over here with its matrices and they're going to morph into and flow into another matrix object that is going to be over by the iPad. So I'm going to make another matrix object and I'm just going to rename these. So this will be our start particle position or start matrices position and this will be our end position. And I'm going to move my end uh, matrix object right over here in front of the iPad. So that's where I want all my particles to flow into. And I'm just going to change this mode to linear and just give it uh, zero in the Y here so it'll just be one matrix one matrices there and I'm just gonna put it right there that's where I want all my other matrices to flow to so this start position I'm gonna change the mode from grid array to object and I'm gonna want to clone all of these matrices onto an object and that'll be my arm object so you can see right away boom we actually have our arm here with matrices distributed all over the vertexes of this model. Uh, but I actually want to just change this to surface and just bring uh, the count up to say like 2000. So that that's looking good. We got some good coverage. You can definitely make out that arm form. And so we need to get these particles from the arm over to that other matrix object over here. So to do this again we're going to use my favorite effector, the inherence effector. And what the inherence effector is going to do is I want to make sure <clears throat> first that it's applied. It's applied. Cool. So what the inherence effector is going to do is you're going to inherit the position of one object or you're going to inherit, you're going to apply this to an object and you're going to say you want to inherit these matrices to inherit the position of these other matrices over here for the end matrix object. So I have it applied to my start matrix object or the arm particles and I want it to directly inherit the position of the end uh, matrices position. So I'm going to drag and drop the object or the end matrix object into the object field and you can see that all of my arm particles here, all of my arm matrices jumped over to that position of the end matrix object. Now that's not what we want. We actually want all of these individual matrices to jump to that one position. So to enable that, we're going to turn on this morph motion object, and you can see that that 
kind of all of our matrices disappeared. But if I adjust the strength, you'll see up oh, there they are. They were right behind the iPad here. So they're just following and inheriting the position of the matrices position on that end matrix object. So the one thing I like to do, and I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference, is I like to keep it consistent with the amount of, with the count of matrices on the start and end position. So if I'm going to work with 2,000, I want to have a 2,000 count in my end. Uh, just so I, I've sometimes uh, had particles kind of uh, jump on and off and flash on the screen if I had uh, different values. Uh, so that I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference, but that's what I like to do. Uh, so we're going to go into our enhance effector, and you can see as I move the strength from 0 to 100%, we're getting our motion here. So first I'm going to hide my uh, arm model here and bring our, our strength back up and I don't want everything to be affected all at once so I'm going to give my uh, give my effector a fall off uh, I'll choose a linear fall off with orientation to plus X and you can see as I move my fall off from left to right it is sucking all those matrices to and moving them to inherit the position of this other matrix object right here which is exactly what we want. Uh, but, you know, this is, uh, we need to first animate this guy. And we can also adjust some things after we animate. So I'm going to position my fall off over to the left here. And I'm going to hit a record a keyframe in the X. And then move over uh, until all of my particles have left or have moved to this. Uh, point and has been affected 100% by the inheritance effector and record another keyframe. So I now have my fall off from my matrix object or from my inheritance effector passing through making all of my matrices now inherit the position of the end matrix object position. So right now it's very linear, kind of boring. Uh, the first thing I want to do is get rid of the ease in and ease out on my uh, inheritance object or inheritance effector uh, fall off movement. So I'm just going to select both the keyframes, change it from uh, spline to linear and that will give us a nice linear curve and we'll get rid of the ease in and ease out on that movement. So looking good. Uh, <clears throat> and we can do some other things to adjust uh, how these particles are flowing from one point to the next. And that is by either adjusting our fall off here, the actual size of it, or we can go in and adjust the fall off percentage here. So it will smooth out uh, or make the, uh, make how it affects it. It has like a more of like a gradient ramp, uh, like a longer gradient, so it's a little bit smoother. And we can also change this fall off function from spline and give it to, uh, inverse cubic. Now you can see how the original looks, or it's just kind of kind of very linear, not much smooth ease in or ease out or anything. But once I change this fall off function to inverse cubic, you're going to see something very different. So we're going to have this nice smooth easing, and then once it gets going, it gets sucked right in there. So I'm liking what I'm getting from this uh, this inverse cubic fall off function and we can still adjust and play with uh, the fall off percentage as well as our actual size of our fall off but I'm liking that I'm liking what I'm seeing so far here uh, the one thing that we have an issue with is all of our matrices are moving very linearly just straight in and it's not looking very interesting or organic and that's uh, the kind of movement that I'm gonna be looking for uh, for this for the scene here so to do that with my start matrix object selected I'm going to go and add a random effector to it and that's going to randomize the position right away and I'll give it a little bit higher value say a hundred and X Y and Z uh, and you can see right away that this is affecting everything so what we want to do is also give this random effector a fall off as well and we'll choose linear orientation in the positive X 
And so we want this to kind of affect the particles as the inheritance effector is affecting particles. So I'm just gonna position my fall off uh, to kind of affect everything at the same time as the inheritance effector. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this to follow the position of the keyframed uh, inheritance fall off. So now the random effector is gonna move right along with uh, the inheritance effector fall off. So right now we have everything, nothing scaling down right now. Uh, so we can do one of two things. We can either create a third uh, effector, a plane effector that just kind of scales everything down that also has linear fall off uh, and position it over by the side pad. Or uh, since our st uh, matrices from our start position are inheriting the position scale and rotation, of the end matrices, we can actually just change the end matrices scale to zero. And you can see that our matrices are then slowly inheriting that scale of the end matrices as well. So that can be a solution to having all these particles kind of scale down as they're heading towards that iPad object or that end matrix object. So you can also even have a little bit more fun and have uh, these matrices have a different rotation and have these kind of rotate as well. So now you see our matrices are rotating to match the rotation of our other matrices. So you can do that as well. I'm going to turn that, uh, turn all that down, but keep that in mind when you're actually doing this because that it's inheriting everything. So position, scale, rotation, you can also inherit those values. So we're inheriting the scale to scale everything down. All right, so uh, the last thing I'd like to do here is we have a very linear, uh, everything's being affected very linearly. So there's a definite straight line where our particles are starting to move and where they're not. Uh, so what we wanna do is make this a little bit more organic. Let's have some of these particles in here start to move as well and not just have this straight linear fall off and linear movement. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and add another random effector. And this will just randomize the weight. So I'm gonna change this random effector to random weight. And I'm going to apply this to our start matrix object. And I'm gonna apply this first, this random weight first, uh, and turn off our position, a random position here. And I'm just gonna go and adjust the random, uh, the weight transform. And you can see with it zero value, we're having this linear uh, affecting of, of our particles or our matrices. As I change this and adjust that transform, we're now randomizing when our p matrices are getting affected. So some are being affected uh, early because of the noise, some are getting affected later. Uh, and that is controlled by this minimum and maximum. So if I adjust the min or the maximum down, you'll see that that's cutting off and there's no randomness uh, in front of those effectors. So we want to keep that to 100% and that now you'll see that a lot of our particles are being affected back here as well. So keep that in mind. You can have some more finer control over the randomness by adjusting the minimum and maximum and just by adjusting the weight transform here. So I think a value of like 55 is pretty good. So we have some nice randomness. You really aren't seeing that straight line where things, uh, where the matrices aren't getting affected at all on this right side of the fall off. So I think everything's looking pretty good. Uh, I think maybe even bring this down a little bit more and maybe adjust the maximum down a little bit too and hit play. And that's looking pretty good. So we now have a lot more organic movement, but everything's a little bit too frenetic. Uh, so we can actually go back into our random effector that's randomizing the position and change the random mode from random to turbulence. Now what that's going to do is make everything really frenetic, and that's because automatically, uh, by default, we have this animation speed set to 100. I'm gonna turn off the animation speed of our turbulence altogether. And then to get a more smooth randomness, I'm just gonna scale up 
that noise or that turbulence noise. And if I bring it to a higher value, you can see it's smoothing it out a little bit more. And if I bring it up to about 700, that looks pretty good too. And just like we did with our inherence effector, we, where we can change the falloff percentage and the falloff function, we can do the same exact thing with our random object here, or our random effector here, and maybe even change this to inverse cubic as well. So now we have a little bit more smooth, gradual uh, of, uh, of these matrices, matrices getting affected. Cool. So everything's looking pretty nice and smooth. We can even bring up our turbulence scale a little bit more. And if you want, you can even have your random effector affecting it before it starts moving and getting affected by the inheritance objects. So now you have all of our particles or matrices start to move and then zip over as it's being affected by the inheritance effectors. So you can get some pretty cool looks by just moving uh, your falloffs here. So maybe you want everything to kind of gradually start moving and then get sucked in. So whatever, whatever you want to do. I think this looks a little bit cooler. Uh, where you have this kind of gradual being affected by the randomness first and then inheritance. So that's looking looking pretty good. And probably need to adjust the inheritance over here so it's since we added that random weight we need to then adjust how far over uh, our fall off position needs to go over here. So now it's all of our particles are now gone and disappeared. So that's looking good. So that's the first step is setting up your particle movement with these matrices so you have a really fast viewport because we're working with you know 2,000 particles here and our, our viewport is super snappy. So now we can actually go and start introducing our geometry and we're just going to then apply the geometry, have the geometry be cloned onto all of these matrices and just follow the positions of the matrices by just simply cloning onto this matrix object. So you'll see I already have this uh, cl uh, cloner object here with all of my numbers in it and they're just Motex objects and I'm going to turn everything on and I'm going to change my cloner mode from linear to object and for object I'm going to just drag and drop my start matrix object in there and right away you can see that all of my numbers are now on this on this uh, matrices so everywhere there's a matrix there's gonna be or a matrices they're gonna be a number and everything's kinda slowing you see the blue the beach ball of death kinda coming up every now and then so I'm gonna go in bring down my count to say 500 just to speed everything up a little bit here. There we go. Hopefully that gets rid of the beach ball. And render instance is on. That's good. And so we can hit play here and you can see that all of our all of our uh, numbers are now following the positions of those matrices. So I can actually turn off the visibility of my matrices or my matrix objects here and we now have our numbers moving instead of those matrices so you can see as I'm playing this out we're getting this really weird stuff going on and that is only because of having this render instances on if I turn off render instances first off everything's gonna slow down of course but we're gonna get rid of that popping uh, so just keep that in mind. I'm just going to keep working with the render instances on, uh, but you can see there's no more of that popping of all of these clones disappearing randomly. Uh, so when you go actually render this, make sure to turn off the render instances, but uh, when I'm working with this, I'm going to keep it on. Cool. So next thing I want to do is, this is looking okay, uh, but I'd like to add some more uh, realism to this stuff and add more organic movement. 
I actually want to uh, have these numbers like kind of tumble off of each other. And I'm going to do this by making all these cloners dynamic or all these clone numbers dynamic. So I'm going to go and add a simulation tag, rigid body, and I'm going to uh, apply tag to children and <clears throat> uh, individual elements all and I'm going to hit play. And you can see that all of our objects are kind of moving right from the get-go and that is because we need to then go to our trigger, our dynamics trigger, instead of immediately we want this to trigger only when it starts getting affected by those uh, by the effectors. So to do that we're just going to change the trigger from immediately to velocity peak. So the moment a effector moves that uh, cloner or moves the, the actual matrix object matrices that moves the cloner, that's going to enable the dynamic simulation on that clone. So let's go and hit play and you'll see that now everything's kind of moving. Some of these are tumbling off of each other. Uh, and you're still seeing that popping again. That's only because the uh, that's only because our render instances is on. Uh, so what I can do is uh, number one to have all of these clones kind of follow a little bit better and smooth everything out is to go to my force tab and just enable follow position and uh, rotation, and that'll kind of smooth everything out and have our clones as they dynamically tumble uh, more follow the path towards the iPad. So if I hit play again you can see that now it's kind of smoothing everything out since we have the follow position and rotation. And we can actually turn off the rotation so we want things to maybe tumble a little bit more. And the more particles you have the more tumbling you're gonna see. So what I'm gonna do is uh, number one to get rid of all the, the popping is to actually just go ahead and uh, I can increase the count here to say, uh, whoa, that's too much, uh, to about 1500 and then I'm going to, uh, number two, I can actually randomize the scale of these guys. So I'm going to go and create a uh, RAM effector that's going to randomize the scale of these numbers. So I'll just give it a negative 0.5 so we have randomness in the numbers. And let's just go ahead and cache our dynamics. And we're going to include the collision data. And let's even, just to make sure you can see the tumbling, I'm going to go in and notice if every time I want to increase the count of the actual clones and the particles, I'm going to my uh, matrix object here and that's just going to automatically update and clone more of those numbers on there. Now let's go ahead and get in the beach ball again. Let's go ahead and cache and bake the uh, dynamics here. So I'm just going to hit bake all and now all of our dynamics are baked so I should be able to just go in here and hit play and see all of our dynamics happening still seeing that popping again that's because of our dang uh, render instances kind of giving creating some havoc but you're seeing kind of seeing all these tumbling of our objects and if I hit render in one of these frames right here you're starting to see all of our particles kind of scaling down moving over towards that iPad and looking pretty nice uh, so again what we might have to do to make this actually look uh, decent is go to our uh, go to our cloner object, turn off render instances, and then bake that sucker. And this is going to take a lot longer because without the render instances, you're going to start seeing actual tumbling and a lot more tumbling and a lot more accurate uh, dynamic simulation. So I'm going to let this go and fast forward. Alright, so I had my dynamics cached and I did a little software preview here. So you can see exactly what we have. We have uh, some 
tumbling going on with the di uh, with the dynamics added, and uh, everything's looking pretty good. We have the uh, the nice fall off, the uh, inverse cubic fall off that's getting that nice gradual, and then zoop getting sucked in there uh, to the iPad, and looking good. So then what we would do is render this out, and then just reverse it in After Effects. And then just play it backwards, and you can see that that would actually form uh, the arm coming from the iPad. So the iPad would look like it's shooting out particles, and it's forming that uh, arm. So that that's how that was done. So uh, the last thing we need to do to put on the, the finishing touches for this is to actually uh, add some ambient occlusion. Uh, so we get some nice shadowing. Uh, along these guys, along the numbers, and then uh, just a little bit of global illumination. Uh, I set the gamma down to about 0.5, so it's not so bright. Uh, but we get some nice shading, and then I have some uh, overhead soft boxes that I set up in the scene as well. Uh, just one behind and one overhead, so we can get some nice shadowing. Uh, not <clears throat> mind you, I had a lot more particles in here uh, to make more of the form of the the arm in my actual project that I made but this should give you a good idea for how uh, to get how I achieved this look as far as lighting wise there we go that's our final render with the nice shading everything like that you can really get that form of this arm from that arm geometry and just to recap everything was done with starting out with the two matrix objects just to get our matrices as placeholders for our particles so we get the movement nice particle movement the nice particle morph uh, going good with our effectors and then we cloned our actual geometry onto that initial matrix object and so those clones followed the matrices and then we added dynamics and got to this so hopefully you guys will be using the inherence effector a lot more I have a ton of fun with this uh, I've I've demoed many many um, ways to use it in a lot of my NAB presentations and any chance I get in a project to use it I have a lot of fun doing it so hopefully you'll jump on the inheritance effector bandwagon after this so and that'll do it for me, and that is how you morph particles with Inheritance Effector. See you in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.